I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is March 7th, 2021. In this video, I'll be doing, I'll be showing how to download, prep, and install ESX 7.0 on a white box server. Okay, before we get into this, I want to go over a couple of things because trying to install ESX on a white box server can kind of be sometimes difficult. Now, up to 6.5, I had no issues. I had to do, well, I shouldn't say I had no issues, but I had to fight some things, but I got things working. Now, with this one, I had some more problems, especially with my Ethernet card. So I had to go get a new Ethernet card and just kind of want to show what I have in case someone needs to set up their own box. So what I have right now, some of the key points is I have this Gigabyte, Gigabit Z390 motherboard. Uh, and I'll put links to it to these in the show notes. I have an Intel Core i3-8100. Uh, and also, here's the more, more important part, is the Ethernet card on it would not work. I tried a bunch of things. I could not get it to work with a 7.0. And so what I had to do is go out there and buy this, an Intel EXP19301CT gigabit uh, desktop. Now, there are other options out there, but this one worked for me, and it was relatively not too bad to, to buy. Right now, you can get them on Amazon, you know, new for about... 40 bucks. Uh, but you might want to go look on eBay. I went on eBay and I actually found uh, three of them. So I actually have one here. So I have the last one here. So boom. So I got three for about 30 bucks, I think. Uh, so it might be a good idea to look on eBay, see if you can find a used one. And the nice thing is if you get multiple ones, like I put two in there, uh, you can actually set up the two to act as a uh, fault tolerance, which is kind of overkill for a home server in my opinion. But I tested and it was kind of nice. So I plugged both of them in. I took, I uh, unplugged one and it faulted over the next one really quickly. So um, for a couple bucks, not a bad idea, but I wouldn't, for a home server, I wouldn't go on my way to do that, but it's nice. Anyway, that's important if, because uh, eh, without this, trying to install it, you get to a point where it says, hey, the, 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 hard, the hardware is not compatible and it will, just won't install. Okay, so with that, a couple other things. Now let's go download it. So if you have never downloaded this before, uh, what you want to go to, the easy way to do is go to vmware.com, try vmware.html, and then scroll down here to the bottom. And down here at the bottom, oh, here I'm at the top, scroll down to the bottom, and down here you'll see this, past the IoT, you'll see this VMware vSphere hypervisor 64-bit. You can click on this. Now I have a problem right now because I've already previously downloaded it, so it gets a little confused. So I've actually, I need to open this in an incognito window, which is a little weird, but just that's what's going on with me right now. So you open this up. Now what you have to do, if you, you need to log into your account at VMware. If you don't have an account, go click create account and log in. So I'm gonna go log into the one the ones I have. Okay, now that you, if you, once you log in, you'll see down here, license and download, you'll see register. You have not registered for this product because you want to register so you get a key so that you don't have to, so you can go beyond the 60 day trial period and actually go, you get it, it's free, you get it infinite. So what you want to do is you'll go here and I'm going to probably blank this screen out. Uh, well, I should. Enter all your information. So it's going to ask you for all your personal information. Uh, you know, because hey, they're a company, they want to make some money. So they need to know who you are. Okay, so get that all in there. Uh, then put the CAPTCHA in, of course. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Then you need to agree to the terms. And I'm already signed up for things, so I don't need to sign up again. Hit sign up. And boom, once you do this, now it comes back to the screen. You'll see a couple of things. Let me scroll down a little bit. On the license and download, you will see a license here. So download this license. You'll need this license later in this video to, to register it, so you'll be done with that real quick. And then here, just click on manually download. So I've already done this before, but I'll do it again. Click manually download, and it begins to download the ISO. So go ahead and do that, get that, but record your license key. Okay, now last thing you're gonna wanna do to get this ready. Now you have an ISO, you can burn the ISO to a disk and use a disk, but it's probably a little bit easier in this day and age just to go use a thumb drive. So just have a thumb drive here, get a thumb drive that you are okay wiping out. And one thing you can go down, do is you go to rufus.ie and download this Rufus application. So you can actually create a um, bootable, you can take that ISO and create something that you can boot up on the USB. And so once you download the ISO, download Rufus, start Rufus, and then here's all you got to do. Go here, click on here, find uh, your USB drive. I have one installed right now. So it'll find it. If not, you need to choose that one. And then go over here, click select, and go find your ISO. So here we have the ISO 7.0 that I downloaded prior. So you can click on that, click open. And then it says MBR, BIOS, UEIF. All the defaults are pretty much good. MBR, BIOS, there we go. Large, fat, crate. That all looks good. And then just hit start. And so I'll hit start right now to let this go. It'll say warning. 
I'm going to wipe everything out. Hit OK. If make, make sure you check that you're not wiping something out you don't want to wipe out. But if you're good, hit OK. Now, this can take a long time depending on what's going on. In fact, sometimes it gets a little confusing because we'll open something like this and you think you're done. But you're not. See, it's still going. So in this case, I've already done one. I'm good to go. But let that finish. In fact, it might take a while. Like I think I had this one on USB a 2.0 and it took forever. I just left the room, let it do its thing. But make sure it's completely done before you pull it out because I did pull it out a little bit too early. And of course, it wasn't done. And, you know, it's not going to work then. Okay, with that, take this guy, plug it into your server. Uh, make sure, well, I shouldn't make sure, but it's probably a good idea to have, a, like I have a new hard drive. So my new hard drive's in there. It's blank. I only have the one single hard drive plugged in for this. And then I plug this in and start it up. And the only other thing you might want to do, I'm probably not going to go over it in detail, but in your, if you have your BIOS settings set incorrectly, your BIOS uh, will try to go, um, it'll boot off different things. It'll have different priorities. And you may have to go into your BIOS. You may have to set your USB as a priority boot. But with that, let's get going. So go plug this in and start your server up and we'll go through the install process. Okay, so I got the USB stick plugged in there and I'm booting up right now. So I'll press F12 to get in the boot menu. Because as a matter of fact, even though I hoped against hope, I thought that the um, it would go to the right one, but I need, still need to tweak the boot orders because it actually chose the wrong thing, so it got into a weird state. So let me press F12, get in the boot menu, and change things. Okay, so here I'll just go, I'll go enter setup. over here to BIOS. Now, th this is gigabit, so your, your might be different. So I'll go into BIOS here, and I'll go down here to Boot Option Priorities. And I just changed this on my last boot, but I'll do it again. So here I'll go Boot Option 1, and here's all my other choice, like I said, Western Digital. But here I have this UEFI OS P3, oh, not this one, UEFI SanDisk Partition 1. That's the one I want, SanDisk. That's obviously... In my case, that's my uh, my USB stick is a sand disk, so I'll choose that. So now I should boot up properly. So now I'll go over to save and exit, hit yes, and hopefully it boots up and starts installing. Sweet, there we go. Okay, so now we are booting up. And there we go, we are starting the install. And I'll put a timer on here, I probably already have, even though I might speed up in between parts to kind of show how long the whole length of this installation takes on this. Okay, there we go. So, welcome to VMware ESXi 7.0. Basically, hit enter to continue. Okay, F11, we want to accept their terms and conditions, right? So, we'll accept that. Now, at this point, it might scan your, your hardware, and if you don't have compatible devices, it might yell at you. So, for my example, without my um, Ethernet cards I put in there, I couldn't get past this point. So, we can see there's my main hard drive I have in there. So, I'll hit choose that one, which I already pre-selected it. I'll hit enter. Scanning. Okay, now do you want to wipe this out? Oh yeah, hit enter. Now choose your keyboard, the default's fine, hit enter. Now here you're gonna put your password in. So I am literally gonna put in the word password, which is not a good idea, but I'm making a video and I'm gonna come back and reinstall this again and put my actual password in. E even though I, I can come back and change the password without doing that really. Um, okay, so there's my password. Hit enter. Oh, it does not have enough characters. Okay, so I'll put uh, 100 at the end. Password 100. Hit enter. Oh, not enough character types. Oh, man. And a dollar sign at the end. Password 100 dollar sign. Let's see if it likes that. It does. Okay, cool. F11. We'll start to install it. And we'll let it go. Okay, so now we're going to enter a reboot, but when we do, as it, start, as it stops and starts, we want to pull that USB stick out so it doesn't accidentally start on that USB stick again. 
We'll let it reboot. Okay, I'm gonna pull that USB stick out. And hopefully we have an ESXi 7.0 server here now. Looks like we do. Okay, there we go. So now I wanna customize a few things. What I wanna do is I always set the static IP. So I'm gonna hit F2. I'm gonna put my password in here, which is password $100 sign for now. And then I'm gonna go down here to configure, configure management network. I'm gonna on, click on that, go to IPv4 configuration, and then go to set static IP for address, hit the space bar to choose that, and then come down here and enter in a new address. So I'll say, uh, oops, let me see, two, uh, one, 192.168.0.242. Uh, I'm just doing that for the video. I actually use a different system in, in my house. But there we go, 192.68.0.242. And of course, put whatever address you want in if you're going to do a static, a static IP. Hit enter for OK, and that should be set. And then hit escape to go back to the main menu. And when you do that, since you've changed things, it says, hey, do you want to restart it? And you'll say, uh, restart the management network. And you'll say, capital Y, say yes. It'll restart. It won't restart the system. It'll restart the configuration management portion. Hit escape. And now we can see our new address right there, 192.168.0.242. So we're good to go. Now let's go log into it, be the web console, and can do it and actually register it. Okay, so now open up, you know, in my case, 192.168.0.242 in your web browser, and you should go here. Now for username, you want to be root, and then we'll type in password, well, in this case, password, $100 sign, log in. Okay, and I don't want to join the VMware customer experience, so I'll uncheck box that, hit OK. And then right now you'll see here on this main page, you are currently using ESXi in evaluation mode. This license will expire in 60 days. So we want to put our license in. So what I'm going to do is you go over here and click on manage, go under host, click on manage. And over here, there's a licensing uh, tab. So you click on that and then you click on assign license. Open this guy up and then just cut and paste your license. So take your license, paste it in here. Of course, I'll be blacking mine out because I don't want you to see my license because it's mine. And then click on check license and it will actually go verify it. Once it verifies you and gives you that big green check mark, then you click assign license and now it's in there. And of course I'm blacking mine out, but your license number will be right there. It'll expire never. That's a really nice thing. And then if I go back and click on my host again, we will see that has gone away. So that's 60 days. So now we are fully registered. We are fully good to go and we're done. So now so that's how you basically download ESXi, get it prepped to uh, on a boot for, on, to boot to get it prepped to install from a USB stick, and then um, to install it and then register your license key. So boom, I'm done. We're good. I got my server and uh, I can start making images. I can start making start making my virtual servers. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.